serious issues and as our sheikh said if we hadn't seen it if i hadn't seen it you know it, it would have been a different scenario but we've seen things with our own eyes that have caused impact on our lives um, and these guys are all going to leave i'm going to be here with you guys all and it's going to be a bit of an issue if something happens he's going to say ma salama he's going to say i'm feeling sick He's going to just slither away as he mashallah always does for my companionship. We're good friends, don't worry. Uh, and I'm going to be left here and you're going to come and tell me, do ruqya on me. And so I have to be the one that gives you the disclaimer that I have uh, stopped doing ruqya for many, many reasons. And I try my best to avoid it as much as possible uh, for multiple reasons. And it's not something that I... And one of them is simple. It's very, very, very time consuming and energy draining it really drains your spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. You just, you're just, after an hour session, half an hour session, you're just done for the day. I don't know how some of the Raqis do it for hours and hours after time. It's something that I found exhausting. It's something that started affecting my personal life and my family life and whatnot. And I just decided I'm not too interested in this uh, profession. I'll leave it to the, uh, the experts, Alhamdulillah. So with that disclaimer, and also one more disclaimer, one of the, the main points of us listening to these stories, uh, and these are all like, except for uh, Sheikh Ammar who narrates from somebody who narrated from somebody, but the rest of us have all eyewitness stories here. And inshallah, you trust us, you know us. One of the main purposes and wisdoms is to increase our iman. That wa'dullahi haqq, the promise of Allah is true. These aren't just tales and fables. In my own personal life, I have experienced things that make me certain that the Qur'an is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I see the impact of the Qur'an with my own eyes. I see the world of the jinn that no one could have told me had it not been found in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. This is a world that is ghaib to us. And we see it manifested in front of our eyes in a reality that should increase our own iman. So we are not here to have entertaining stories. This is a real threat and a danger. And it is a tangible harm. Just like a scorpion can harm you, a wild beast can harm you. These are demons. And they have the potential to harm you. It's not a joke. Do not take it as a joke. Do not go home and start the teenagers here dabbling in pseudo Harry Potter type of stuff. It's not a joke. Do not play Ouija boards. Because Ouija boards is a portal into the world of the jinn. It's not a joke. You are literally opening the door for that entity, for those entities to come in. You're inviting them, come, I want you to come, I want you to come. And once they come, then you come running to the rest of us after the damage has been done. Don't do it. It's a real world. We have seen it with our own eyes. So as we tell you these stories, it's not for entertainment. When I first, uh, when I first started doing Ruqya, so I studied with the Shaykh in Medina uh, in a particular year. Um, I realized that I would be coming back and I'd have to do a lot of things that we weren't trained for. They do not teach you exorcism in Medina. There's no class really? called how to get rid of demons 101. It doesn't work that way, okay? The curriculum in Medina doesn't have that. So I realized I would have to study on my own. So I found uh, a sheikh in Medina that did ruqya and I trained with him one-on-one -on -one for a while. Uh, and learn some techniques and some, you know, adab and whatnot and, and, and different, uh, you know, because the sheikhs know there are certain ayat that are more powerful. There are certain you know, experiences, the cumulative experiences that uh, raqis have done. So I, I studied a little bit and I'll tell you my first juqya ever, the first one, which terrified me immensely. But in hindsight, it was actually pretty straightforward compared to what I would see later on. Uh, the first ruqya I ever did, I was still a graduate student in Medina, still in Medina. There was a brand new convert that had come to study in Medina, like a literally fresh convert, like a month or two. Brand new, completely jahil about fiqh, hadith. He doesn't know anything. He just converted and, you know, connections whilst I applied to Medina, he got in. He's still learning how to pray. And the reason I say this is that what I saw with my eyes is found in the books of hadith. He could not know it himself. So uh, one day his roommate was reading Quran and weird growlings come from his room. And they come in and they found him, find him writhing and you know, like clearly he's like, you know, possessed and whatnot. And so his roommates start reading Quran over him. And they, one of them was a friend of mine and he knows that I'm studying with the Shaykh. 
So I get a phone call in my apartment. It's like, Sheikh, you got to come over. You got to come over quickly. There's somebody that, you know, we need you for. It's the Ruqya session and whatnot. And of course, I'm an, uh, you know, just a graduate student. I'm excited. Okay, get into my, you know, uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters mode. Yeah. The What's Ghostbusters. the Ghostbusters? What is yeah. the mode? What is the backdrop for it? Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> who are you going to call? That's who it. Yeah. Who are you going to call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like YQ. Call. Okay. So he right. calls up YQ. He's like, come on. I need you here. We got somebody riding on the floor. Come do Ruqya. And I'm taking a class with the Sheikh. I'm like, yeah, I can handle this. Don't worry. I know. I've studied. Zero experience. Plenty of book knowledge put, at the put time. The right? Put the thobe on. You know, just <laughs> drive to the dormitory. They were in the dormitory. And uh, so the, the brother is lying down, you know. Um, and I spent like, you know, two hours the whole time there. So there's a number of many incidents happened there. Of the things is that uh, when I first started reading Quran, subhanAllah, again with my own eyes, it's a very thin brother, just wearing a, 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 a thobe, you know. Um, uh, when I started reciting, I could see the jinn moving up and down his body. His body is rippling as if there's like an alien entity going up and down. And I would put my hand on his chest and I'd see it like blur, 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 like fluttering away. And I put my hand there and it goes back up and goes here. And I put my hand here and it goes so I'm literally watching his body. You can't make your body ripple. You know, you can't have just ripples coming up and down the body this way. And I'm seeing with my eyes that rippling taking place. And I'm beginning to panic quite a lot in this regard, okay? Because, <laughs> you know, you can like this is this is really bizarre. Uh, we spent the whole afternoon there. So one of the brothers, mashallah, he gifted us some lunch, you know, because we're there. He went to get some lunch. So we're all sitting down to eat lunch. And the brother's, you know, sitting in the corner. Uh, you know, we, he's just sitting by himself. And uh, we're all eating. We say, Akhi, join, like the brother, not the jinn. Brother, join. And he's like, it's okay, I'm not hungry. Okay. So we're eating. And one of our brothers drops accidentally. You know, it's like everybody eats from a common plate. So one of our brothers just drops a morsel. It just drops from his hand and he leaves it there and he goes in for round two. Instantaneously, I saw from my corner of my eye, the brother just darted like a snake. You could imagine a snake with his left hand, grabbed that morsel and gobbled it down in a very unnatural manner. How so? Why so? What's happening? What did our Prophet say? Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. When a morsel drops from one of you, pick it up wipe away any dust and eat it and do not leave it for shaitan. This is a hadith. This brother could not have known of this hadith. The reason why the brother could not eat our food is we all said Bismillah. So he's saying, I'm not hungry. But he was starving. The jinn was starving. So the one luqma that falls down and he doesn't pick it up, he's just like, I'm not going to touch that. It fell on the carpet. I'm going to go in for round two. That luqma, that, that morsel, was jumped on immediately and swallowed with the left hand. Again, this is a new convert, not knowing anything. I saw with my own eyes, just darting out and gobbling it down like that. And this is reinforcing our iman that the Prophet is speaking the truth. That we are, alhamdulillah, people of the correct faith. Uh, again, many things can be said here. I'll tell you a bit of a, a, bit of a funny story. It's also a bit freaky as well. This kid is an 18-year-old kid, has no clue of any sheikh, any alim. Again, he's a brand new convert. So I began like uh, testing him. I said, look, if you don't leave this guy, if you don't leave him, I'm going to call, you know, sh my teacher, mention him by name. I said, no, no, don't call him, don't call him. Okay, I said, I'm going to call Sheikh Shankhiti. The jinn went wild. No, don't, don't. I said, I'm not going to mention them. I said, I'm going to call Sheikh Spring, somebody by the name of Spring, let's just say. Okay? I said, I'm going to call that Sheikh. He started laughing, goes, no big deal. If you call him, no big deal. Okay? <laughs> Allah then Allah. I said, I'm going to call, I'm going to call Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. I had studied with the Sheikh, he's one of my teachers. And he had just passed away a few months ago, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. Right? And when I said that, he started cackling with laughter. And he looked at me, he clicked his head like this. And he spoke in that horsey voice you hear in these horror movies. And by the way, a lot of these horror movies, they're based on the cumulative experiences of men. So th there's an element of truth in these horror movies. Not that I'm telling you to go watch them, but I'm saying this is the experience of men that is translated into these scripts and whatnot. He spoke in this raspy, joking voice, the eyes cocked up. You can see the arrogance. 
and he speaks. Are you gonna bring him back from the dead? Like literally. And I just froze. Because this kid had no clue who Ibn Uthaymeen was. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna bring Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen to these. And he just laughed at me. What are you, how are you gonna bring, you're gonna bring from the dead? And I realized this is an entity That's serious. that is not human. This is an entity from another world, you know. So that was my first experience, which was relatively tame compared to other stuff. So, bottom line, it's not a joke, it's a real world out there. But I'm sure our Mashaikh have said this, but I'll say it again. I have experienced this in my own life. The adhkar is a mechanism that protects you from that entire world. Multiple experiences I have had my own life where my adhkar have protected me. One of the simple stories, not that difficult, I had a very difficult ruqya session. And I went home and I did adhkar on myself before going to sleep. And in the middle of the night, you know, there's this state that you're not asleep and you're not awake. That's typically when the jinn's gonna come. You kind of wake up, but you're not awake, okay? I could see a dark figure coming. I'm half asleep, half awake. I'm neither awake, neither asleep. You think you're asleep, but you're not. You think you're awake, you're not. It's that time. You see the dark figure coming, and I see it walking in my room clearly, even though it is pitch black, but I know it's there. I'm not seeing with my eyes, I'm seeing with my brain. And I see it, and it stops. And I know it stopped because there is a barrier because of my ruqya on myself. Because I did the adhkar. You know when you go to sleep? Yes. You blow yourself, right? I never in my life, no matter how tired I am, no matter what's happened, no matter what state I'm in, I never go to sleep without doing ruqya. Because I have been attacked multiple times in my life with these entities. And I have seen when I do ruqya, there is a wall. And I remember that night clearly that I did ruqya in the daytime. I think even... That was the same incident that happened in front of you that time. That I did ruqya at that time and I went to sleep and I did the adhkar. Allah and I blew over myself and I remember vividly that entity come, coming straight towards me and then it stops. And I knew it stopped because it didn't have the power to come and harm me because I had recited ikhlas and qulu allahu adhan and falaq al nas and I had recited ayat al kursi and the last two verses of Baqarah and I had blown over myself. So it was a barrier between me and that entity. So point of action, always do your adhkar and always before you go to sleep, blow on yourself so that inshallah it's a barrier.